The national focus on the story of Gabby Petito, whose remains were identified yesterday in Wyoming, has generated a parallel conversation about how much attention is given to white women who go missing versus the amount of attention and resources given to cases involving women of color. According to the FBI, there were nearly 55,000 adults who went missing last year where the person was believed to be in danger or had gone missing involuntarily, I think kidnapping. More than 15,000 were black, while more than 34,000 were white, which includes Latinos, as the FBI doesn't have a separate category for them. So are these numbers reflected in all the coverage or national attention? Joining us now, journalist and host of the podcast, Run, Tell This, Mara Schiavacampo. Mara, thanks so much for being here. Great to see you. Thanks for having Look, me. Look, the Gabby Petito story is interesting and raises all kinds of questions, and, and there, there are things that need to be investigated and discovered there. This isn't saying that that story is not important, but. Yeah, well, thank you for starting that way, because that's important to note. This isn't saying that Gabby Petito is not important. What it is saying is that there's an overrepresentation in media when white women go missing and an underrepresentation in media when black, brown, and indigenous women go missing. So, for example, Lacey Peterson, Natalie Holloway, Chandra Levy, these are all household names. We can all think of their faces when we say their names, but I'm willing to bet that no one watching or listening can name one single black or brown woman who went missing who became a household name. And there are comparable examples of young, beautiful, middle-class women where every other factor is aligned with, say, Gabby Petito, but the only differentiator is race. So, for example, Nikki Fitz, 32-year-old mother in California, went missing in 2016. How many people know her name? Her two-year-old daughter went missing with her. That child is still missing to this day. So we're talking about representation. And this isn't just, I mean, you might look at media coverage or a layperson might look at media coverage and say, okay, well, those are the stories that get blown up and that get covered. But what is the harm? What is the harm of it? Yeah, so unlike with other stories that maybe are, you know, over, over or underrepresented, this actually has real life implications for women of color. Why? This makes them less safe because perpetrators, uh, predators know that if you want to get away with murder, you seek the victim that no one is going to look for. So this has very real implications for women who are, are walking around today. Also, when there's all this media attention, that puts pressure on law enforcement. That diverts, directs resources to these searches. It increases reward money. So these women are much more likely to be found because of the media attention. It's really interesting you say that. Lala Santiago, who's down in Florida covering this for us, said that as far as she could tell, the FBI and law enforcement presence yesterday was greater than she had seen in the days before. Yeah, the media is very, very powerful. So when the light is shown on these women, and no one's saying they don't deserve it, but other women deserve it as well, when everybody knows their face, when everyone knows that the world is looking for them, it makes a real difference. And this is what we're seeing when the, when the value system, society's larger value system of white women being valued heavily and women of color not being valued as much, comes through the media because a lot of the decisions about what's being covered is made largely by newsrooms led by white men. And that's the core of the problem here is that this reflects the value system. It's, a, you know, I think also separately from women of the George Floyd case and all of the resources that got mobilized outside of that department where they wanted to make sure that they had their best shot at a, a top notch prosecution. But look, this is this is something that we have seen before, right? This is actually a term that was uh, that the late, great Gwen Eiffel, who we miss very dearly, came up with. She talked about this at a Journalists of Color conference back in 2004, so let's listen to that. I, I think at the time when, 94 in Rwanda, we were looking at, uh, you know, Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding and, and Wayne Bobbitt. You know, everybody knows what happened to I, Bobbitt. I, you know, I, I, mean, I, I, call it, I call it the missing white woman syndrome. <laughs> If there's a missing white woman, we're going to cover that every day. <laughs> it's true. What's changed? Yeah, nothing has changed since then. And, you know, we miss Gwen Ifill because she was a truth teller. She told the truth. I have covered 
tons of crime, and I can spot a quote unquote perfect victim from a mile away. I could have told you that this Gabby Petito story was going to blow up because we all know who gets attention. We all know who gets coverage. That has to change. Imagine the men, women, and children in the community where Gabby Petito went missing who know that for the last 10 years, more than 700 indigenous people have gone missing and nobody has said a word. And one missing white woman turns up in their backyard and the world pays attention. Can that I, is insulting. Can I ask you a question, though, just par about part of this story if it's something that benefits all women, which is this 911 call. We know the call was about Brian Laundrie allegedly hitting her. Then you look at the Moab police tape, right? And it looks like she's going to be the one who gets in trouble. I wonder what this says for all women, though, about and, and for policing when it comes to how they should be approaching uh, these these domestic violence incidents and how perhaps they should be asking more questions. Yeah, it is very important to have these conversations. And this is a, a sisterhood, right? The sisters support each other. But but what a lot of folks are pointing out is that the rules don't apply equally. And that's what we all want. We want all women to be protected. We want all women to be searched for when they disappear. We have to think about this as we cover this. Mara Skiavacampo, always lovely to Thank have you. you. Thank you. Good to see you, you guys.